Hi. Today I'd like to discuss the configuration and calibration of equipment required to make a high voltage piezoelectric measurement uh, using an MTI 2100 displacement uh, meter and a uh, radiant uh, HVDM high voltage displacement test fixture. In an earlier video we discussed the equipment required to make the up to a 10,000 volt measurement. Uh, we have a track amplifier, a radiant high voltage interface, and a radiant precision tester. Today we're adding to that the uh, MTI 2100 displacement meter and the radiant HVDM high voltage test fixture. Right. To begin with, I'd like to take a tour of the uh, radiant HVDM, the high voltage displacement test fixture. Starting with the bottom half, the test fixture has a fixed copper electrode that engages a connector that takes a voltage signal from the tester drive output and applies it to the bottom electrode of the sample. The bottom reservoir can be filled with a mineral oil or other fine oil to uh, prevent arcing through air around the sample depending on the voltage. The top half of the fixture has another copper electrode. This one is free to move. Um, being free to move, it will allow for samples of a variety of thicknesses. It also uh, will detect sample displacement and uh, well, reflect the sample displacement in its motion. Um, if I insert the sample, close the test fixture, the sample is now sandwiched between the two electrodes, and we're ready to make a high voltage measurement. <clears throat> in order to make a displacement measurement, I'm going to pass an MTI uh, test wand through a stability arm and through the center of the test fixture so that it is uh, over the top electrode and reflecting off the top electrode and will uh, detect the measurement. The larger diameter uh, test wands, they're held in place with a set screw. It's a 1 16th hex screw um, adjusted with a 1 16th hex wrench provided with the delivery of the system. For narrower test wands, such as the one that we're going to be demonstrating today, a uh, friction sleeve is placed in the hole and it will hold the test wand in place. The stability arm is attached to a micrometer post that uh, is uh, also locked with a um, hex, uh, 1 16th hex screw. The micrometer is used to adjust, make fine adjustment on the, on the uh, position of the, of the detector uh, after the, it's been adjusted in a coarse fashion simply by inserting it. Once the position is in place, any, any lateral play in the, in the stability arm and the setting on the micrometer can be locked in place with a locking ring at the head of the micrometer. Okay, to begin calibration, the first thing you need to do is establish a linear relationship between the displacement that the MTI is going to detect and the 0 to 10 volt output that it's going to send into the tester sensor port. The calibration numbers I'm looking for are on the side of the plug-in. Pull the plug-in out. Now you'll notice there are two plug-in ports allowing two plug-ins, different plug-ins, um, each representing a channel on the, on the uh, uh, MTI. The left plug-in is channel 1. On the side of the plug-in is a label that will give me this, the uh, scaling terms that I need. In this case, it is 0 0.01583 microns per millivolt. And convert those to any units I need. And for this case, uh, I'd uh, convert to uh, microns per volt, so I'd have 15.83 microns per volt. And that's the term I would enter into the Vision software. So, in Vision, I'm going to find piezo in the task library under hardware, measurement, piezo. I'm going to take the advanced piezo task, give it a meaningful a meaningful task name. Uh, if I set the voltage to say a thousand volts and try to configure that, uh, I'm going to get an error that uh, because the high voltage amplifier is not selected. So what I need to do is go back to 
a lower voltage. Click the Set Amplifier button and in the sub dialog select External High Voltage Amplifier. Leave everything else at default. I can now go to 1000 volts. I also want to set my period so that uh, the amplifier uh, doesn't overdrive its ramp rate. So I'll go to 100 milliseconds for 1000 volts. I'm going to add appropriate comments. Then I'm going to add enter the displacement meter scale that we took off the label on the side of the plug-in. 15.8. I add the value as a negative value because positive displacement on, of the sample reduces the distance between the uh, um, reflective surface of the uh, electrode and the test wand and is regarded by the test wand as a uh, negative displacement. If I add a, a negative uh, displacement scale, it accounts for the, the difference. And then I want to display, make sure I select the proper units, which is uh, microns per volt, and I'm ready to execute. Reinsert the plug-in, make sure it's firmly seated, Turn on the MTI unit. Allow it to go through its startup procedures. Once the MTI has completed the startup procedures, it'll be again displaying numbers at its its uh, its um, LCD. Uh, now all MTI plugins operate in two ranges. Range two is a coarse range for large scale displacements that isn't really appropriate for our measurements. Range 1 is 10 times more precise, and so we want to operate in range 1. In order to switch ranges, there's a range select button that you simply press. Make sure that we're on range 1. It's also important to have uh, the high-pass filter set to DC in all cases. And for this measurement, I would set the low-pass filter to wide band. Finally, uh, I would select uh, the, a mode of, uh, put the mode switch into the cal position. Okay, to begin uh, physical setup, I'm going to take the high voltage drive signal from the MTI into the lower connector of the HVDM, the test truck. Uh, and that's a voltage st signal that will stimulate the, the bottom electrode of the sample. Take the upper connector of the HVDM from the upper electrode of the sample into the HV return port of the HVI. The MTI test wand, first I'm going to connect its cable to the strain relief to reduce a little bit of the weight on the cable, and insert the test wand into the friction sleeve, and continue to insert, watching the front panel of the MTI, until I begin to see a signal, and I get it to a course maximum. Then I'll take the micrometer and adjust until I find a, a true maximum. And that's roughly been from 1.3 to 1.4 volts. Once I'm at the maximum, I'll lock using the lock ring at the head of the micrometer. I calibrate by passing, uh, pressing the Cal Start button on the front panel of the MTI. And what this is going to do is relate the 10 volt maximum output at the rear panel of the uh, MTI to the maximum signal input of the, of the um, MTI uh, sensor wand. Once I'm in calibration, I'm going to go to displacement mode on my mode switch. And then I'm going to set my units to volts. Now, right now I'm at maximum voltage because that's where I put it. So what I'm going to do is use the micrometer, loosen it a bit, and bring it down to about 3.5 volts. Once I'm at 3.5 volts, I'll lock the lock ring. And there may be a little bit of drift, but
the actual number here doesn't matter so much. Um, what's important is that we establish a voltage that's a, a zero reference for our displacement. And uh, um, the MTI manual will actually tell you to take it to zero volts. But we're actually interested in having uh, some voltage overhead in both directions from the center voltage uh, because we're going to be applying a, a bipolar uh, voltage uh, waveform to the sample. And it's going to displace in both directions, so we want to be able to detect both uh, uh, displacement in both directions. Um, once I'm at the set point, I lock the locker in, and I'm ready to make my measurement.